Hello and welcome to Front Row Heroes with Betfred. We are on a mission to find out about how the rugby league community is rising to the test in these challenging times. In this episode, we'll be finding out a little bit more about rugby league charities, in particular Rugby League Cares. We've spoken to Steve McCormack from that charity and we'll bring you that interview very shortly. But first, let's hear from some familiar faces from within the game and why it's so important to keep supporting rugby league charities in these difficult times. Hey, Mosse here. I'd just like to say a big thank you to everyone who has supported me since my accident, especially the Rugby League Benevolent Fund. Look, I've just popped in to tell you that I'm a massive fan and a huge supporter of the Rugby League Benevolent Fund and the RL Kerr's charity. We know that this is a challenging time for everyone, not just people in Rugby League. We also wanted you to know that Rugby League Cares is doing everything it can to help people at every level of the sport. Everybody is working exceptionally hard as always to support the general well-being of all our players and our aim is to enable all our, our players to stay healthy and positive during this tough time. We all know how amazing our rugby league family is. Um, you've done so much for me and my family and you continue to do so much for the wider sport um, and also through the DJ Fund and I am so grateful for your support. I always have been and I always will be. Um, charities, the, the rugby league charities at the moment are working so hard behind the scenes, harder than they ever have done before to try and keep people safe and protected um, through these really horrible and uncertain times and they really do need your support now more than ever. They are doing some fantastic work right now involving some of the most vulnerable people in our society. So what I'd love you to do, if it's at all possible, is get involved in the 2.6 challenge to help raise some funds so that they can continue to do the fantastic work that they do and help keep our game the great sport that it is. On Sunday I should have been running the London Marathon and in a couple of weeks I should have been riding from Niagara Falls to New York on the Empire State 500, the biggest fundraiser of the year for Rugby League Cares. That's not happening, which means the £100,000 we were hoping to raise for Rugby League charities has gone. You can still support the charity's important work by getting involved in the 2.6 challenge. Um, the 2.6 challenge um, that has been launched through Rugby League Cares is a great idea and we'd love to see as many people as we can getting involved and supporting um, this, this, these amazing causes and these amazing charities, um, like I say, that desperately need your support more than ever um, at this time. So please get involved um, and support the wonderful uh, Rugby League Benevolent Fund. We hope you can get behind Rugby League Cares and the 2.6 challenge. Let's all do our bit, help the charities which do so much to help people in the sport. Please get involved in the 2.6 challenge and support all the outstanding work Rugby League Cares are doing for everybody within the Rugby League community. Our sports charities are fantastic and make a difference to the lives of so many people. Please show your support for the Rugby League charities by getting behind the 2.6 challenge and raising the money that is needed. Thank you and take care. there we go a little bit of insight there as to why it's so important to keep supporting rugby league charities at this time and uh, as I mentioned at the top of the episode today we're focusing on rugby league cares uh, a charity that does fantastic work in the sport and I spoke to a man who does a lot of hard work with that charity Steve McCormack. Steve first of all thank you for joining us just for those that don't know could you give a little bit in of insight into what rugby league cares is and does and then what your role within it is? Yeah rugby league cares is the, the charitable arm of the sport really so um, you know, we're an independent charity, um, and within the charity, there's a lot of um, a lot of things that happen. Obviously, the Benevolent Fund um, does a fantastic job in in helping all our players, um, whether that be in the in the pro game or the community game, and um, looking after the the player welfare um, of, of the whole sport. You know, so you know that uh, that came across over the last couple of years, and um, so it is in independent. So all our player welfare managers are, are obviously employed by the Super League clubs, but. You no, know, we liaise with them on a, on a regular basis, um, and then there's things like the offload program, um, you know, and everything else. What what we can support our community with regards to mental health and, and keeping them active. So, um, a lot of things happen. And obviously, um, unprecedented times that we're in at the moment. Can you just give a little bit of insight into what Rugby League Cares has been doing in the current situation. Yeah, it's really tough for everybody in the communities, you know, and um, as you said, it's un unprecedented and. You know, from our point of view, you know, we want to look after and support everybody within our community, whether that be 
you know, people within our community game, whether that be um, you know supporters, whether that be our players, whether that be our past players, and just generally everybody within the rugby uh, community. You know, whether you know that be by you know introducing some mental health programs and you know looking after our past players with uh, with help. You know that that could be going getting them prescriptions and, and giving them, them them support and just reaching out for anybody that needs us in these tough times and. I'm really proud of, of of what everybody's done in our game and, and, and our sport, and you know, I think that will continue over the you know the next few months. We've seen a we've seen a theme across the country, not just in rugby league, but um, particularly in rugby league, and people putting themselves forward for volunteering. And I know there's there's players in uh, some of the semi pro and amateur leagues that are NHS frontline workers and and key workers. Do you think? Rugby league's always done well at looking after its own, but do you think that that kind of spirit and community element of the game has, has really shone through the, in these times? I think so. I think you mentioned, um, you know, just in general, you know, the, the whole communities everywhere looking after each other. You know, Thursday night at eight o'clock, everybody going clapping for the NHS, and you know, we've we've got a lot of our RFL employees is actually you know doing some support work for the, the NHS as well, and a lot of our um, people what, what work for us and. Uh, work for rugby league, Kers and the RFL and Super League and the World Cup have got you know partners that are key workers. So you know it's a big thing that we're all in this together. You know everybody's pulled together, and um, that community spirit that I think rugby league you know certainly uh, thrives on. You know we've, we've always done that. We've always stuck together. Uh, we've always helped each other. You know there's some fantastic people within our sport, and um, you know this hasn't gone on, on unnoticed over the last you know five or six weeks with with all this happening and. You know, I, I say it lots of times, you know, I think uh, you know, there's still some tough times ahead, but the way everybody within our community and our sport um, and everybody at Rugby League Curse has pulled together has, uh, has been sensational. And, um, you know, I keep saying how proud I am of it, but, uh, you know, that, that's the case. You know, it's been fantastic. And there's been a, a joint initiative launched between yourselves and the RFL and the Super League and some other partners as well called Rugby United. Could you just give us a bit of an introduction as to, to what that is and how people might be able to access and benefit from it? Yeah, that, that's just giving daily uh, advice and daily activities with, with regards to keeping active, um, you know, looking after the mental health, you know, making sure that we're checking in on people. Um, it's interactive, obviously, with, uh, you know, we're not being able to get that face-to-face -face contact with people, but, um, you know, that's on Twitter, it's on the Facebook um, accounts. Um, there's a lot of things happening, you know, Rugby League Curse is also um, sending out a lot of um, past games, you know, which has been brilliant. You know, we're looking at some of our legends of the game playing, you know, in the in the, in the 60s, 70s, 80s, um, you know, and it just just goes to show, you know, Rugby League United has got everybody involved, whether that be Super League, RFL, Rugby League, Curves, the World Cup. Um, it's just uh, epitomised that community spirit that, uh, that that this game's all about. There's a lot, a lot of content go, content going out, um, and the feedback that we've had from um, from everybody involved has been has been superb. And you, you mentioned mental health. It's obviously, you know, we talk about physical exercise and we talk about people getting out and volunteering and helping, but I suppose it emphasize, you know, there's emphasis on just how important it is to, to keep mentally sound and mentally healthy as best you can in times like these as well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's just as important as, as the physical health as well. You know, um, not being able to, to do you know, your, your normal routine and get out and about and meet people, you know, and socialise and, you know, there's a lot of people stuck in the houses, you know, and they're on their own at the moment, no families, um, no support network, and, and the only time they can get um, to speak to people is, is through going to the community clubs, going to the rugby league games, super league games. So we're, we're just putting a lot of content out there just to, to try and support these people. Um, you know, and that, that goes for our professional players as well. You know, the, the professional clubs are, are putting loads of stuff out with regards to, uh, you know, keeping themselves fit. You know, it's a little bit of being known for, for all our, our professional clubs at the moment when the game's going to restart. But, you know, a, alongside that, our play welfare managers are also putting out, um, you know, certain things just to, to make sure that the mental health side of it um, is looked after, not only for them, um, but for the families as well. You know, we've, we've looked at trying to support, you know, the, the children, the partners, um, you know, so, so they're doing a great job as well. And as you said, it's just important to look after the mental health side of it as it is the physical side. Um, you're one of a few charities that I guess would come under the umbrella of rugby league charities. There's some out there doing fantastic work. Can you just give us an insight into kind of why it's important for those charities to be supported at times like these? 
think it is. I think it's always important to um, to support all charities. I, I think, you know, rugby league cares. You know, we look at uh, the benevolent fund. We look at the the absolutely fantastic work that, you know, that that side of, of the, the charity does. You know, the work that Stephen Ball does and in supporting some of our players who, who have uh, who have suffered, you know, quite a lot in the careers. You know, maybe a bereavement. It may be a a, a life changing injury. You know, and that that support never stops. You know, a lot of these players. You know, need support. We look at, at Mossy at the moment at Hull KR. Who, um, what an inspirational story that is. You know, you know, with, uh, a life-changing injury that Mossy's had, and the support that um, he's got from everybody within the game. You know, the club, the supporters, the community, um, the benevolent fund, and then you look at the inspirational story about him getting back on his feet and working that hard. And you know, those 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 kind of stories and those kind of real-life experiences. And just shows why why the charity is really important. I mean, you mentioned Mossy. Obviously, even before this pandemic struck, a couple of really high-profile cases of of people in our community that have needed support. Um, obviously, Mossy and Rob Burrow before Christmas as well. Uh, it's a big part of what Rugby League Cares does, isn't it? Helping those ex-players who have retired from the game or had serious injuries in Mossy's case, uh, you know, to to try and progress into to post rugby life normally, but also deal with with situations like this. Yeah, absolutely, and, and not only you know the players themselves, but the families and the support network as well. You know things that that change their life. You know things, you know, could happen. You know the um, you know the, the, the flick of a switch, and you know it's it, it's tragic at, at times some of the stories, but it's also inspirational. You know, I look at you know my role um, over the last twelve months has been a transition manager, so looking at players that uh, have retired. You know, over the last you know ten twenty years and. Um, it's been a, a, a big honour to, to get around and speak to you know some of my heroes of the game. You know when I used to you know sit and, and watch him when I was a, a, a Wigan supporter and watch some of these legends of our game and you know helping those as well. You know sitting down and just grabbing a coffee with those and networking and you know the, the rugby league grant system as well. Rugby league has grants. You know we uh, we look at giving the players grants to enable them to get a better education, maybe go on courses. Maybe support the um, the stuff to get them back working, you know, etc. And you know the impact that uh, that the charities had in, in a lot of ways um, is it, certainly been shown in, in, in over the last uh, few months and years. And you mentioned player welfare managers at professional clubs as well. Still a relatively new thing in context, but I mean, I don't want to be too basic for saying that they're extremely important people at rugby league clubs, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. You know. I think the most important people, you know, along with the players, etc. You know, the the job that they do is it's it's a job that, you know, we, we can't go out and, and maybe publicise what the play welfare managers do because of the confidentiality. But the support that they offer the players, you know, the staff, and the work they do on a a twenty four seven basis, our basis, you know, it's not just something that you can switch off on. You know, the um, the work that Emma Rose Warren's done, and, and you know the the um, the the system that, that that Emma's left for us at the moment is is sensational, and, and it's it's seen as one of the pioneering pioneering welfare systems in sport. And you know we're looking at improving all aspects of, of that as well. But you know the work that our play welfare managers do at the clubs, um, you know for for me the the, the unsung heroes at the clubs. You know they they, they work exceptionally hard, and very good people, and um, you know they do they do some awesome work um, throughout the year. Yeah, just lastly, Steve, we've, we've, we've touched on bits throughout this chat, but just in case there's anyone watching this from the rugby league community who is struggling, um, whether that be a fan or a player or whatever, do you just kind of lay out what support is available and how they can go about getting it? Yeah, I think from a professional player, you know, we have our player welfare managers as we've, we've spoken about and, you know, we've got a great relationship with Sporting Chance as well, you know, Tony Adams Charity that um, looks after you know players with um, you know with a, a, a range of, of things that need supporting, and then obviously our our outreach work um, with the charity you know they've got some signposting to a lot of places like the NHS um, you know support network for mental health um, you know there's, there's a, a lot of things that people can, can access as well you know it's all on our website it's all on our, our, our social media and and all I, all I would say is if if you're struggling anywhere or anybody's struggling. Um, you know, it's it's great just to reach out, and you know, you, it's a very powerful thing to, to do that, and a tough thing to do that. Um, but once uh, once you know, you, you generally speak about the support you need. There's some fantastic people out there that can that can do that. 
Well, Steve, thank you for joining us. It's invaluable work that Rugby League Cares do, and it, uh, it really doesn't go unnoticed in the Lancashire community. Hopefully, we'll be back soon with some, with some actual rugby to watch and we can get on with our lives. But in the time being, um, you know, please, you know, thank you for what the work that Rugby League Cares are doing. Thank you, Willis.